and it's off to Singapore for the weekend. And then after that, down to Sydney to see Seb. Should probably let him know I'm coming. Pro tip to my YouTube Red followers that love to play internationally, you definitely need to set up a US VPN because you're gonna be really disappointed when you get to say Indonesia, which is why OpenVPN Connect. Check out all the episodes on that. This trip has just brought me the coolest aircraft from the longest haul flight on a Dreamliner to now the new A350. It's got one of the highest ETOPS ratings. I think it's 370, which means basically it can fly for six hours, over six hours with only one engine. And it was one of the first to ever be like ETOPS 180 plus uh, before it ever went into service. So this thing is like a really new aircraft and awesome. I'm very excited. So this is the weirdest thing to watch an episode that I'm not on, but we're trying this. So I think this will be the fourth episode yet that I'm not on, and I'm really excited to be like bouncing back and forth with Shannon. But from the thumbnail, it looks like I'm in it. I don't know how she did that. It's weird. Ladies and gentlemen, meet our arrival in Singapore. Also, we have passengers traveling to Dubai. Please report to the Civil Police Magazine for more details. In preparation for arrival, please return to your seat. Shannon, you had me absolutely cracking up on that episode. That intro was brilliant. wonder if anybody knows who Sarah and Jason are. Those are the folks in behind the scenes making the hack shop happen. Love you guys. Miss you. Okay, I gotta turn my phone off now because I gotta go through customs. Keep it encrypted. Checkpoint Singapore, always make sure your phone is encrypted and turned off before going through customs. Okay, so this one's a completely new one for me. I'm used to like USB drops. I mean, I'm very familiar with USB drops, but SIM card drops. Seriously, I just found this SIM card laying around. I don't know whose it is. Should I plug it into my phone? Considering that these things run Java and have like all sorts of cool access, like part of me just wants to get a SIM card reader and plug it into a computer and dump it. The other part of me is just going to return it to the information desk so that lost and found can take care of it. But really, of all things to find laying around, a SIM card. All right, so they wanted my like name and address and phone number and everything to drop off the SIM card as like the finder of it. What is that? To, that makes no sense. So anyway, another pro tip is just claim American ignorance and smile and nod and say no thank you. That seems to work. Similar to always asking to use the bathroom no matter where you are on any sort of social engineering op, just because people open doors for you to all sorts of sensitive places. There's a point to this episode, by the way. I'm going to find it. What? No. What am I even supposed to do with this? Yeah, that. Singapore. Well, it's rainy Singapore. And uh, we'll see what trouble we can get into. When in doubt, gin and tonic. Also, pro tip, make sure it's not a brothel. Well, that went well. Mm. 
Many excitements are happening. I've got epic B-roll shooting right now. I've finished all my morning meetings. And most of all, uh, that's really dark. I'm downloading the latest version of the Bash Planning 1.1 firmware. Seb sending it to me right now. And you know what? The Wi-Fi gods, I, you know, knock on wood, are, uh, are behaving. Damn, I shouldn't have said that. Like literally, as soon as I said the Wi-Fi gods are behaving, of course, my fear is that since I'm using Netcat to transfer this, that I'm going to get it, check the MD5 sum, and it's going to be 350 megs of useless. By the way, pro tip, Windows finally has an MD5 sum built in. I should probably use a microphone for this. Windows finally has a MD5 sum sort of thing built into PowerShell. Get file hash, and then your file, and algorithm, and in this case, MD5. Seb said 911EB. Ah, I think I have the file. Awesome, got the new firmware from Seb. Can't wait to test it out. Another pro tip, I feel like this episode is just pro tips, uh, especially when you're thousands of miles from home, one is none, which is why, oh, that's a turtle. Two is one. Oh, yeah, don't mix them up. Don't mix them up. Don't mix them up. Shit, I need a sticker. So you know that moment when you spend all that time waiting for something to download over a Wi-Fi connection that keeps fluctuating between 800 kilobits a second and eight megabits and it's really fun. And then like right afterwards you notice that on the desk the entire time was this little puck and you're like, wait, isn't that ethernet? And you're like, oh, but if only I had a USB ethernet adapter for my laptop, did I leave it in San Francisco? Right, but in your cute little bag of tricks you also have a LAN turtle, which is a USB ethernet adapter. Hindsight. It's like 40. This is my firmware flashing face. This is my just started blinking green face. It's not blinking anymore. I'm way too amused by this LED. There we go, new and improved blinking pattern for firmware flashing. It's like the police are after you. With all the blue and red. Policia. Whatever they're called here. Let's I? I don't know how to pronounce anything. It's 3.30. I haven't left the room yet. I've been at it for eight hours. The new firmware works great, but there's a bug. And it's not with Seb's code, it's with my extension. Now I'm fighting with Bash. I'm sure Singapore is beautiful. The hotel room's nice. <laughs> oh, Bash. You leave me to drink. Cheers to Bash. Actually, cheers to Windows and New Lines. So this is a bug that I've run into numerous times over the years, and I can't believe it got me again. Uh, but it has to do with the fact that Windows and Linux do not treat New Lines the same. Actually, they both treat New Lines the same, but Windows, because of its DOS legacy, also inserts a carriage return before the New Line. Those carriage returns are represented as the hex value 0D, while a New Line is 0A. Uh, Linux machine will interpret all of those 0As as going to the next line, but they'll also see that 0D and interpret it as this, well, you can see it if you open up the file in VIA and it'll show it as like a caret M. And that's just going to break everything. So what I ended up with doing is just a super simple extension just to test this to see, hey, will this payload be able to use this extension which just types hello world and it doesn't work. Basic simple code should work. Sets the LED attack mode, sets you know, sets the LED, sets the attack mode to hid, and then issues this hello world, which should call this function here, hello world, which all it does is you know types the hello world, right? As an example, if I take a look at this run extension that I've been working on in Vi, I can see that I've got these just horrible caret M's at the end of every line, which is preventing any of this from running. Which is frustrating. Uh, but that's my fault for using Windows. Actually, no, it's something that I just have to work around because I'm kind of trying to make the Bash Bunny accessible for Windows, Mac, Linux, whatever. So, I just need to work around it. So in short, here's to DOS, here's to the carriage return, and here's to 0x, 0z. By the way, OPSEC says I'm double fisting. 
If you have a great idea, bring it to the web the way Shannon and I do and head over to Domain.com. With an awesome domain discovery service and a quick and easy checkout process, you'll have the perfect site up and running in no time. And the guys over at Domain.com are huge Hack5 fans, which is why HAK5 will save you an extra 20% at Domain.com. Or just send them a tweet and say thanks for supporting Hack5 all these years. So, when you think domain names, think Domain.com. Suddenly I'm in Sydney. I'm on my way to see Seb, which is so exciting. I haven't seen the guy in months. In fact, it was about a year ago this time that I kind of lost him here in Australia. So that's a story for another time. But the uh, point is, I'm so excited to see Seb. And as it turns out, he's fixed my code, which is good. He's a good coder. <laughs> Also, I'm being directed to this place called a JB Hi-Fi where I can pick up a DJ. Also, I'm being directed to this place called a JB Hi-Fi where I can pick up a gimbal stabilizer. So, no more shaky video. <laughs> I shouldn't do that because it makes it shake more. That's true. Uh, yeah. Well, how's the stabilization on that? I, it's, no, it's pretty bad. It's S7. Okay. Okay. This is Seb. You guys know that. I, I love you, man. Oh. Me too. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I should probably get that stabilizer if it's not in the bag. I have goodies from the US. <clears throat> oh well. good, my Tetra is here. This isn't this isn't what you typically get in a hack shop pouch. But hopefully it means that my camera is not gonna be no, that's not it. Is not gonna, no, that's not it either. Dang it. Okay, I have to buy a stabilizer, which means I have to pay 500 Australian dollars instead of 300 American dollars. Ouch. Uh, this is a um, spinny do. Uh, so you uh, put your camera on in it. Yeah, spinny. we do have, but uh, is that the automatic or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can so it just... charges on micro USB and then you know, oh, standard tripod so thread. Does it have a sound? That's even tinier. Oh, that's, yeah, that's perfect. Sab! Sab! I feel like there's something between us! He's jaywalking. I'm not, because I just came back from Singapore and it's instilled in me. No jaywalking. I'm, I'm actually even wondering if I should let you guys know where we're going because this place is so amazing and Sab, are we gonna keep it to ourselves or are we gonna let him know? About the shady thing. They should, they should know Shady Pines. Okay, it's it's quite shady. It's called Shady Pines, and that's all you need to know. If you're ever in Sydney, you have to Shady Pines. You'll see why. where you say something insightful. No. <laughs> I'm like trying desperately not to get wet. <laughs> this is where I lost Seb last year and I, I see what all the fuss is about, among other reasons. Okay, so we have updated blink codes for upgrades and recovery. Oh, see, that's a fun one because you don't actually have to specify the color anymore. You can specify 
like what you're actually doing. So if your script is cleaning up things, you can do LED cleanup. And if your script is finished, you can do LED finish. Similar with setup and attacks. <laughs> yep. I can go down a bit. All right, so, so what else is new? Uh, We've got uh, the LEDs, which I'm happy about. Yeah, we fixed a whole bunch of stuff related to storage. We uh, cleaned up uh, a lot of the leftover files. That Massive there. amount of bug fixes. Yep. <laughs> This is Seb's first firmware on the bunny, and I'm very excited about that. There's many, many little things, but... Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, no, we can't have that. <laughs> I'd say one of the most exciting things for me is the fact that the language is extensible through, obviously, extensions. named extensions. Yeah, so bunny extensions. So we now have a folder. We had the bunny helpers before, but we now have a folder that just gets automatically sourced to everything that's in there. Uh, which means that, you know, people can write extensions to the language the way we have Quack right now. Yeah, so a simple write... example. Right, I'm constantly doing things in the Windows run line. Right. And that requires like four lines because you gotta, you know, pull up the run line, you gotta wait, you gotta type, you gotta hit enter. Yeah. So now that's just run and then whatever you want. Yeah. You and just run specify the, the OS. And uh, I don't know, notepad.exe and it's gonna open notepad.exe, yeah. Or run OS X and some website and it's gonna put that into spotlight. Yeah. Or Unity. You got Unity. And so those can also be updated because they're their own files, so you can send a pull request to any yeah, of those in, They live in the payload repository, so they're just in a separate folder there called extensions, and it's just any file that's in there. So yeah. if somebody wants to do like run KDE or run Haiku or run BOS, yep. you could bring back BOS. Isn't that smooth? This is Seb in his natural habitat. And that is not plugged in anymore. Any cables touching? Okay. There we go. See, that's that's the exact kind of behind the scenes that they that they never get to see. Is this exact discussion. Because it's like, do we put read-only storage and CD-ROM into this firmware? Or do we put it into the next one? No, it's it's not. Yeah. Because this yeah. one's like ready to go, but like we could just keep adding features and adding features until until the cows go home. Is that no, no, that's no. that's Netflix Minute. Because that's, mm, that's, that's moving. Yeah. He's hacking till the cows go ah, home. Ah, that's what it was. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. No, sorry. I don't know. Mm. What do you guys want? <laughs> they probably want sooner than later. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Who does Who doesn't mind flashing to one point one and then flashing to one point two? Yeah. I, I mean, what we've got right now is great. So let's just ship it. Yeah. Okay. I'm done with that. Cool. And then we can make 1.2 even better with those features and then also all the feedback from 1.1, see? Yes. Yeah. 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 But definitely the serial thing. The yeah, serial, I can yeah, the, the serial, serial yeah, number yeah, thing. Yeah, I can do yeah. that. I can do that. Because like, if you change your vid and your PID, that's great because you can spoof any device. But if you could also change the serial number, well, then there's you know less data points to be uh, used for uh, whitelisting. Yeah. Because that's fun to bypass. Yes. Also, it's still shaky. See, it doesn't, this thing doesn't work if I don't actually put the phone on it. <laughs> what? Do you know why, uh, why the pineapple doesn't do the blinky bikes? No, why? Because instead of booting the operating system, I'm just going to BusyBox. Because that's what cool people do. <laughs> <laughs> let's, just, let's just ship Busy, BusyBox. Reboot. Now do we get the blinky blinks? By the way, you called it a pineapple. Did I? You're just so used to that. Oh, too hard. Oh yeah, there's the police pattern. Uh, how do you, how do you say it in German? Polizei. Polizei. So I was close. <laughs> I was close. Yes, new Polizei mode. Run. Did I seriously just come out of a William Gibson novel?